All right, this is uh, Michael Smith uh, at Not Trivial on Twitter, uh, doing a story for DS106 TV at Harmless Pleasures Printmakers, Macintosh, Florida. Okay, so I'm here with uh, Michael Kemp, a printmaker from Macintosh, Florida, in his studio named Harmless Pleasures Printmakers. Why don't you tell us where that name comes from? Well, I actually, I had another name in mind when I started, but um, there was another printmaking facility with that name, which was uh, Sun Circle Printmaking. So I cast around for another one and noticed uh, in an article the old uh, writer, English writer Samuel Johnson described art as a harmless pleasure. And so I thought that was a wonderful way to describe it. And that's what it is for me, in a way. And uh, so we use that as a name. And um, it's a, it's, this is my private printing studio. I have another studio um, at my other uh, location where I actually make the plates. But this is pretty much a printing studio. I mainly print here. And I also give lessons and workshops for um, local people. There's three other printmakers who work in here occasionally. And uh, uh, I have, you know, I help them with the specific projects. So um, I've been a printmaker for about 30 years. I went to the University of Florida and I um, uh, have a, a master's in printmaking and painting. From, the, from that university, and I worked with the famous American printmaker, Ken Kerslake, and in fact, uh, this, was, this is his press. I acquired it um, just before his death uh, three years ago. He wanted me to have it, so. That was very um, nice of him. Um, he, he made it possible for me to buy it from That's him. That's great. And uh, it's the main thing. I, I have three other presses, but this is the, the one I use in here because it's the most reliable of all presses. And in here I have some of the work. Uh, yeah, why don't you show me, just show us around. Well, here is, uh, this is a print from about uh, 25 years ago, and it's a landscape, and what's characteristic of my landscapes is that I print them, I drew them directly on the plate from life. Very unusual method for a printmaker to use, especially at that time. I just sat there for days and days and days, sometimes weeks and months, just drawing um, as I looked at the landscape. In this particular case, it's it's done on two plates because I only had a small press at the time and couldn't print both plates at once. And later on, I was able to print both pla plates. And this is kind of characteristic of the landscapes I was doing at that time. When was that? Well, um, the 70s and the early 80s. OK. Uh, uh, conversely, I have here, this is a this is a work in progress. This is one that I'm working on at the moment. It's, uh, it's the same thing. I'm looking right at a landscape. And I uh, thought I'd have out here just the, this is the plate. Oh, great. Um, this is a zinc plate with a, a hard ground. And all the lines are just drawn directly on the plate as I look at the landscape. Why don't you tell people that don't know what the process is with the acid biting? So, so the they get process, as you see, this is a piece of zinc, which is normally silver colored, but I've covered it with a very, very thin composite ground. Think of it as a coat of paint. And then as you, you draw through, very lightly through the ground, and then put the plate in an acid solution so that the acid eats the metal wherever there's a line, so that you end up, as in this one here, with a line every time that you've scratched. And you can vary the depth of the line. You can have a light line, or like you have here, a dark line. And uh, uh, you can make some, you can actually make finer lines than can ever be made in a drawing medium. The other advantage of it is, if you want to change it, you can literally scrape out the lines and add new ones using just repeat the process. Right. Scrape out and so once once the plate comes out of the acid and you clean it up, why don't you describe the process? How you push it through? Uh, you put ink in there. Print. Then, okay. Yeah. Well, this is the printing station here. So if we had a plate here, what we would do is take some ink and we take a variety of instruments. I use a. Um, a tool like this, which is made of just some felt that's rolled up, and you take some ink that's out on here, 
and then you rub it into the lines of the plate. You rub all over until the whole plate is covered with ink. And then the process is to remove all the ink that's not in the lines. So you have this material here, and you start with the dirty one, like this, and you just rub the ink off the plate. And then you go to a cleaner one and rub some more off and cleaner one and until you finally you have the surface clean and there's only ink in the lines. And then you take the plate and you put it on the press. Uh, you put a piece of paper on top. I don't have some paper out, but it's a piece of uh, very, uh, this is the type of paper you have here. This is, this is actually a, a print that's staged. It's ready for the next color. This is one of actually Ken Kerslake's prints that uh, he never finished. But you can see that it's a very high quality paper. A piece of paper like this costs four or five dollars. Then you wet it, you put it on top of the plate, and then you run it through the press. And when you come out, you come out with a, uh, with a plate that has all the lines on it. And it also, as you can see in this, it usually has some kind of surface tone on it also, which is unlike you would get in a, um, say, a woodcutter or some other really well-defined medium. It often has a surface tone on it. So that's how the printing process works. Right. That's what we do here. That was awesome. Now, um, here, now here is a, these are some other ones that I'm working on. I draw from the figure regularly every week or even more. And right now I'm trying to translate some of these um, uh, drawings into, into figure etchings. And right now I'm just working on using, uh, setting two figures together. And then that once I get this going, I will sort of fill in and, and try to relate them in some particular way. These are done in a, uh, a special way. Here's one that you can see. This is a plate. And I think maybe you can you can see it. It's uh, yeah. this is engraved on a piece of plexiglass. I happen to have a whole bunch of plexiglass laying around, and so this is a print from it. And you can see that the lines oh, are printed, and then I've controlled the tone. Yes. And besides the line, I've controlled the tone on the plate to give a kind of fullness to the figure. Oh, is that with just the rubbing that you... That yeah, that's just, the rub, just the leaving, way that some, leaving some in and selectively uh, rubbing the plate. Right. You can get a kind of tone in it. And I've done that a little more subtly here on these also. Right. Oh, yeah, I love that. It makes me actually think a little bit of a silk screen and how you selectively you know, you have your initial idea of impression, but then you start to, in a sense, paint on the screen, like, right. and you're working with the texture of the screen or the texture of the, the plate itself. Right. On, and then on you, can, you can do that even more. Um, this is one here. Let's see, I don't, have a, I don't have a good light on this. This is a, this is one where it's, this is what we call using a monotype, where we've actually just actually printed a, a ghost image on the plate, and then I've drawn back into it to uh, to create a a figurative piece, which combines a printed image plus some pencil work. Great. And there's another one of the oh, same yeah. type over there. And that that is the series that I'm working on right now that I call uh, the Chicken Fighters. <laughs> Why the Chicken Fighters? Well, it's a it's something we do as teenagers or kids or young adults where you get on somebody's shoulders and you try to oh. push them into the water. And I just think it's a very interesting kind of intimate And that's the struggle. Song, well. So this is a, I've done a, a, a large number of these drawings oh, yeah, I like this. using that as an image. And so that's relatively naturalistic based mm -hmm. on my figure drawings. And then one day it just morphed into a uh, into a kind of a uh, modernistic uh, abstraction of of these human forms, and um, that's where I am right now, working on these more abstract. Uh, this is a drawing 
that's being translated into a plate. Great. So, one, let's just do one last thing. This has been an amazing tour um, by Michael Kempt, a printmaker and, uh, and, and painter in, in, uh, out of McIntosh, Florida. Um, why don't you just tell us something that, what it's like being a, have, having been a professional artist and printmaker for such a long time. What, what, what do you get most satisfaction about and what's sometimes the hardest? Well, uh, the economic reality is the hard part because in the end, as hard as you work, there's never re any real money in it. At least there hasn't been in my career. Um, but you do get, um, if you keep working, you get to do pretty much what you want. And it's probably the only place that you can do that in a creative way. Um, you just keep working every day. And the idea for me is that you do your own visual um, you do. You look back on all the art that's ever been done and take your visual uh, interpretation of it, and you just strive for that individuality and and, uh, and some kind of meaning in it, and then you get to do it. And people leave you alone to let you do it, so that's a good thing. And people, I m must enjoy your work a lot. It's pretty well, amazing. Well, I think uh, you know. I get. I have. Uh, I have good relations with people about it, so that's a, that's a good thing. Well, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. And come, um, come again. Well, I hope I can soon. I thank you. Mr. Rogers. Here.